Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Dave, and today I wanna to talk about PAPI. It's a brand new covered call ETF from Morgan Stanley. Now, Morgan Stanley has been out of the ETF business for about 25 years on hiatus, but they are back, and this is their covered call strategy that they're bringing to market, so brand new. And by the end of this video, I hope, because I'm in Ohio and it's getting cold right now, I, I wanna decide whether I should be buying PAPI Pappy or Pappy to keep me warm. Which would be a better investment for me? So if that is what you're looking for, please stick around. Boop. By the way, is anybody into the Pappy Van Winkle? Does anybody buy that expensive bourbon out there? Let me know down in the comments. All my friends are into the bourbons. I can't quite get there. I'm gonna stick with my wine and my beer, but you know, I'm just north of Kentucky. I've been out of the Kentucky bourbon trail and it's lovely. It's a nice time. It's it's a lot of fun. But uh, yeah, I, I just haven't been able to develop a taste. But let me know if you have. But anyway, we're going to look at uh, PAPI uh, today as we talk about these covered call ETFs. And on deck is uh, BALI. That's uh, from iShares. So we'll be talking about that one probably next. And then AGGH after that. So if you like this kind of stuff, like and subscribe. But AGGH is from Simplify ETFs and been researching that one a little bit and hopefully I'll have a video out on that one. So not everything has to be a covered call ETF in order to provide income, but that's a lot of what we've been talking about. And so we're trying to put together a little bit of a portfolio. But today's focus is uh, PAPI, P-A-P-I, the parametric, fancy word, equity premium income ETF. So brand new to the market. Uh, why Pappy? Let's start there. So gain exposure to an actively managed portfolio of U.S. companies that have demonstrated high current income with a systematic call writing program that seeks to generate additional yield. Tap into two proven parametric capabilities. They're throwing that at us, at us a lot. Systematic dividend income and rules based sell calling in a single efficient vehicle. Access a low cost and transparent ETF that seeks competitive performance consistent monthly income distributions and tax efficiency. And I haven't seen exactly where they spell out how they're gonna be tax efficient, uh, but uh, time will tell with that, or maybe we can dig around a little bit more and find that. So currently, let's see, only been out a very short time, but first thing to wrap our head around here is just how nice this expense ratio is, 0.29%. That's the best in class that I've seen, right? I think that's better than everything on the market currently that you're going to find when it comes to covered call ETF. So very impressive. Again, you can take your time to scroll down through this over here on Morgan Stanley. I'm just going to hit some of the, the highlights really quickly. Key facts and characteristics again. So uh, with this particular one, what's, what's a little bit different is this is based on the Russell 1000 Value Index. So we'll talk about that. Inception date was 1016. So uh, two months ago, exactly. And uh, based off the Russell 1000 Value Index, Pull that up real quick. We can see the Russell 1000 value index measures the performance of the large cap value segment of the U.S. equity universe. It includes those Russell 1000 companies with relatively lower price to book ratios. So we're going to find good value stocks that pay dividends um, within this, uh, this particular fund. And you can see that price to book down here of 2.27. Price to earnings uh, last 12 months, LTM 14.98. So under 15 uh, across the board for, uh, I think there's about 180 holdings in this particular one. So that's pretty darn good. And we'll take a closer look at the holdings, of course. Uh, and we can scroll down here and we can meet the team as well. So lots of experience on this particular team. That's what they're showing us here. And this is actively managed, so that's very important. Hopefully we can put our trust in these guys. So that's kind of the surface level look at PAPI. And we can check out their fact sheet here and we can see that they've got their equity portion of the portfolio, all those different stocks they hold within this fund, parametric dividend income fund here, diversified portfolio of high dividend stocks selected based on yield and risk metrics. Sounds pretty good, right? That's their dividend income, all their different stocks. And then they have this call overriding, rules-based option income. Generate incremental income from our proprietary S&P 500 call overriding strategy. Proprietary, right? It's like that special sauce you get at McDonald's, then you find out it's ketchup and mayo mixed together, but we all have to have our proprietary. It gets people excited, right? It's proprietary. So, and that adds the additional income that we're looking for with these covered call ETFs. Now, 
If we zip over, we can take a look at the prospectus, and this is going to give us a little bit better information on what we're really trying to do here, right? So the fund will systematically sell or write out of the money call option contracts, which have an expiration date of approximately two weeks. So pretty short duration with an objective of generating incremental income. The fund will sell such call option contracts on the underlying ETF. Again, we're talking about the Russell 1000 or the S&P 500 index. Flexible exchange options, flex options that reference the underlying ETF may be utilized. Now they don't have any of those in there right now, but Flex options are an alternative type of option uh, that they can use. Funds derivative instruments are generally limited to its call option writing strategy. So that's the call option portion of the fund and how they're gonna do it. But let's take a look and see exactly what they have in this fund and then we'll break down and see what they actually have uh, sold as far as these sold call options. Okay, so I downloaded all of their holdings and organized it a little bit for us so we can take a look and see what's in this. But we're not going to go into too much detail. I've got about 180 different stock positions, uh, nothing over 1%, pretty diversified. Uh, and again, this is going to be exposure that's probably different from what you're used to seeing in maybe something like JEPI or JEPQ. So if you're looking for some more diversification, this might be an interesting fund for you. Uh, but they've got, yeah lots of different holdings and you can take a look and i would say that they've built this yeah this download out pretty nicely so you can get a lot of information here sometimes you don't see that but looks like morgan stanley's done a pretty good job at uh, giving us lots and lots of good info but let's scroll down to the bottom so i'm sure the russell has done pretty well over the last month and a half ever since what november the the market's taken off offering a very nice return so within all these 180 or so stocks i'm sure they've done quite well but uh, the limiting behavior of selling call options uh, might have taken away from that. And that's probably what we're going to see down here at the bottom. So all the way at the bottom, hopefully you can see this and it's big enough, but you can see the different call options. In this case, all they have currently looks like is uh, SPY, the ETF, selling calls. So it looks like they've got 164, 164, 165 contracts, different expirations, starting with 1220, which I think is this coming Wednesday, 1226. 1229 and you can see the values right here 135 44 and 19,000 so they sold these let's say that let's use this $19,000 figure they collected that income and they're hoping that they expire underneath their strike price and they get to keep all that income but with the stock market doing so well uh, you can see that the call options can be punishing to your position as well so if we scroll over to the side here we're going to see uh, those expirations still, and then we're going to see the strike prices. This is what we want to find. So 462, 470, and 477. And if we look at the S SPY right now, it's right at around 470. Okay, so these sold these call options, and on Wednesday they expire. So if it maintains that 470 price, these are going to have about $8 of built-in intrinsic value that they're going to have to pay for. And that's going to be pretty costly, right? And that's what we see happening right here in this, in this instance, right? The ones that they sold, when they sold these or wrote these contracts, they received maybe, let's say, $20,000. I don't know what the number was exactly, but this has ballooned up in value to $135,000. So that's going to be a big loss when they go and close these options out. All right, it might cost them $115,000. That's going to hit this fund. But let's not forget, they did have gains in the Russell and all these different stocks they hold as well that might offset a lot of that. So there's a limiting behavior with these call options. That's what we have to keep in mind. We're, we're making the sacrifice when we do these types of uh, covered call strategies. And you can see that limiting behavior that we have right now by selling these call options. Even though we're doing it out of the money, once we get past that strike price, if we let it go all the way till expiration and we close them out, uh, it can hit our fund pretty hard as far as the call options themselves. Hopefully, even though we don't own the S&P 500 with us, we own 180 uh, stocks within the Russell 1000 value index, uh, it can still hit us pretty hard. Now, uh, for me this week, I, I've I felt the pain a little bit because I had call options against Morgan Stanley and Bank of America. And if you've been following the banking industry or the financial sector, I should say, uh, it's just taken off, right? So the call options that I sold against Morgan Stanley and against Bank of America, I had to close out. It was a big loss, but I still have the gain in the stock itself and I wanted to maintain those positions and I could hopefully continue to ride the momentum in the financial sector as these continue to move higher. So uh, that's the sacrifice we're making uh, when we do that. So that's, I guess, how this is going to function within your portfolio at times. 
you're gonna you're gonna see this and you might be sweating it a little bit but understand that you still have the gain within the portfolio itself you're still getting the advantage of theta decay over time although it can be pretty punishing when you see positions like this now when it comes to diversification with my own personal portfolio i think you can be too diverse when it comes to stock selection but when it comes to building out an income type portfolio I, I guess I switch my thinking a little bit and I want to be very diverse and I want to attack it from different angles because I'm going to be focused on the actual income that I'm trying to strip off of this. Not necessarily yield. We're still concerned about total return. That's everything, right? Total return. But when we're looking at these, I think mixing a basket of them together uh, could be very helpful. So I'm looking at JEPI and JEPQ here on ETFRC8.com. It's a great way to compare funds and to see fund overlap. So I own both these funds and I can see, okay, well, I'm, I'm overlapping in, in quite a few of the stock holdings here, although I'm attacking it from different angles. So JEPI, it's performed okay this year and I've stripped off some income, pretty good. JEPQ has been a very good performer because it's based off more of those tech stocks that have done so well. And it's had a very good year. In addition, I'm being able to strip off some income, right? So mixing these two together has been very nice. Now, if we add something else in there, uh, for example, PAPI, which is the Russell 1000 value index, we should get, again, a different uh, group of stocks here that'll give us some more diversity and uh, allow us to strip off income in a little bit of different way. So when the Russell's performing really well, when the Q's are performing well, when the SPY's performing really well, uh, hopefully we kind of get that. We're going to get a little bit more of a muted return, but is that okay? I think that's what I would want if I was building out an income portfolio. So that's just an example and a good way to look at it. Unfortunately, J, uh, PAPI is not available yet to do this. So I had to go and uh, download everything and compare it myself. So just as an example, let's suppose we liked JEPI, JEPQ, and PAPI. We wanted to see how diverse we could be with those three funds and stripping off some decent income off of them every single month. Well, with JEPI versus PAPI, we have 120 holdings. JEPI, we've got 180 holdings in PAPI, and I found 40 that overlap, including things like AVV and Costco, United Health, so forth and so on. So between these, you've got a, a lot of diversification, right? And again, I, my viewpoint is that's probably an important factor in something like this. You don't, you only need like 25 stocks to be really diverse, but in this case, we're adding a lot of diversity because we're trying to strip off that income and we want to be in in different areas of the market. So. S&P 500, maybe in the Qs, right? Something over here in the Russell. That makes sense to me in this case. Now with this one over here, we're looking at JEPQ, 100, it's got 90 holdings, PAPI's got its 180 holdings. There's only 16 that overlap. So maybe you don't even need JEPI. Maybe you can just go with these two and say, wow, I've got a lot of diversification here. I've got income coming off of both these with a similar style using that covered call strategy. And maybe for this little basket of money that I'm gonna put to work, and these types of covered call ETFs, I can feel pretty good about that level of diversification. And of course, when it comes to covered call ETFs, everybody wants to know about the dividend or distribution rate for that particular fund. So in this case, it's brand new. We only have one. It was at the end of November. It was for 17 cents. They do this every single month. So if it stays consistent like that for 12 months, we extrapolate that out, we get about an 8% distribution rate based on this current price. So not too bad, but I know for a lot of people, they're like, uh, well, I, this other one pays me 12 or 14%. This one's only 8%. That does not matter, folks. All we really care about when we're comparing this, let's say we wanted to compare it to JEPI, is total return. And, and I understand this is a factor for some people, but I want more, but not at the sacrifice of performance. So always look at total return and not just this number here, please. Uh, you can hear it. I'm, I'm being sincere. It's in my voice. So for me, if I'm looking at should I add Pappy or should I go buy some Pappy, uh, that decision tree, I have to decide I'm going to base that off a of total return. So that's a quick first look at PAPI from Morgan Stanley. This is a brand new covered call ETF from Morgan Stanley. It's not something we have to rush into. We don't have to be the first one to own it. We can watch it for a little while and see how the managers manage it. But I do love the fact that it's based on the Russell and the fact that it's uh, just charging 29 basis points as an expense ratio. So that's that's the best in the market as far as I know. And that can only be good for us as competitors see that 
and uh, hopefully try to be more competitive with it as well. So uh, that's very attractive to me. And so it's definitely on my watch list as I try to build out a nice big soup bowl of uh, ones that I think are attractive. Now, I think covered call ETFs in general will underperform the market over the long term. But if you're an older investor and you're looking for ways to build a soup bowl of income ETFs, not just covered call ETFs, but other things like AGGH from Simplify ETFs, which we'll be taking a look at, like and subscribe if you want to see that one as well. As we build out the soup bowl of all these different income ETFs, can we get decent market performance and be really, really well diversified and feel pretty good about our position? That's kind of my goal. That's that's my angle that I'm taking with this one. So let me know what you think about PAPI down below. If you like this type of thing, like and subscribe, and we'll see you next time. Have a great night. Boop.